Hello music lovers, Andy Wood here and welcome back to The Woodshed. This week I had a Patreon member ask a great question to me. He said, uh, this is from P.S. Neville. I've got my iPad here to help me out. He says, Andy, can you talk about your writing process? I think that'd be interesting. Something like what Jason mentioned above, referencing another Patreon. He said, it could be especially cool to hear how you're going about doing that for the Kennedy Wood Project, since it spans beyond solo guitar. This is a great question, all right? I want to talk, I want to give you about my writing process, my how-to, okay? Basically, for Kennedy Wood, it's one how-to, and for my solo instrumental stuff, it's another. Really, when you start out, you're starting from scratch, and I think a lot of guys get intimidated um, at the idea of writing or, or creating music with, with nothing, with no, no springboard, right? Um, it's one thing to hear your favorite solo and go back and, and learn it, and get it down. And it's another thing to be uh, the, the creator, right? The, the origin point for some music. So when you start from nothing, um, where, where does that, what's that launching point? The hardest part to do is put your butt in a chair and say you're going to write something. And, and just put a goal that, you, that that's going to happen. And I think when you start out writing, um, you have to make yourself right. It's not this process where you're just walking down the street and you're like, oh, there's a song in my head and boom, I'm going to go home and record it and it's done. I think uh, we all too end up being our own worst critics when we write. Uh, that, I think that's really important, right? We, we never feel like it's good enough and let's talk about that. Let's start right there. We never feel like it's good enough, like the idea is not that good. You got to remember that when you start out, it's a lot like Michelangelo. You know, he didn't start out and chisel David. He just took away all the stuff that wasn't David, right? So your idea may be very simple or it may be complex, but either way, that initial spark, that's what I've got here on my, my iPad here, the initial spark of interest, right? That, that, that's like your big block of clay. That's like uh, your, your starting point, whether that be just a riff or a lick or a chord progression. These are all different like launching points. And for me, and when I have a launching point, um, a lot of times it can come from uh, like just sitting and, and, and practicing musicality like I talked about last week. And like when I give myself those fundamental building blocks to practice musicality, a lot of times that will lead to a little motif. And by motif, just that I just mean, you know, a few few note phrase, something that's memorable, right? And then from that point, I take it to my, my iPhone or my iPad and I just set it up and I and I jot down the idea real quick. And and that's really important. Don't ever think <laughs> that you're gonna you're gonna remember what your idea was. Many is the time I'm like, oh, this is great. I really like what I'm playing. It's not like, this is going to be really cool. And I don't record it, right? And, and, and I go back later in the day and it's not there. So when you have that spark of interest, it's, it's so easy just to flip up your iPhone and get a really just basic version of that spark, that, that, that initial thing that makes the, the idea, the composition, what it is, okay? Now, after that, I decide if I, I what what the mood is for the song. Is it light or dark? What I'm saying is, a lot of times, if if the if the mood and the idea, the the, the lick of interest, uh, it could be harmonized probably in several different ways. If you take a melody line that's just, let's say, if you take a melody line that's a D and then it's got a G and an F sharp in it, that melody line can be built around. A lot of different chords right that can be built around a d major chord that can be built around a g major chord that can be built around a b minor chord there's a lot of things that can happen in there another chord it could be it could be based around like a like a c lydian if you have those notes so once you decide like that you've got a little melody line you know you have to you have to see if it's going to be a light or dark kind of vibe right that's a core thing is you going to sit on the the, the the lighter side, the happier side in my mind, or is it going to sit on the darker side? And from there, you can say, okay, it's going to be in a minor key, right? It's going to be slow or fast. And you 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 create in these broad, scoped out kind of 
way of thinking, right? We're going to start from nothing, then you have that little spark of inspiration, right? And you've got to document that, right? And so from there, you decide if it's light or dark, your little melody line, right? Your little riff, whatever that spark may be. And then from there, you decide, is it slow or fast? You're just, this is just easy stuff you can tell yourself. And from there, we're going to delve into whittling away what it's not. For me personally, that's a big thing. If I'm writing for the Kennedy Wood Band or uh, my AW solo stuff, I start looking at what it's not. And like if I'm in Kennedy Wood and I've wrote a riff that's a... Uh, right? I know right off the top of my head that that's not metal. That's not jazzy. That's not fusion-y. That's not country. And, and, and that kind of helps me eliminate all of the, the linguistic things that happen in those genres that I'm not even going to touch. So that's a big thing in composition is taking away what it's not, right? And when you take away something that it's not, that means that you're allowed to take away all of these things that you have no intention on using, right? Like I'm not going to cut a Southern rock bluesy kind of track on channel three of a diesel. Like I, I just know that that's not going to be the tool that's needed, right? And vice versa. If I'm writing something that's kind of shreddy, or uh, fusion-y even, or uh, hard rock or metal, then I am going to look at this as a tool that needs to be used. Here's a big question. Do, do I get the melody or the chords first, right? A lot of that comes from the practicing musicality, and, and the melody or the chords first is tied to that initial thing where I said starting with that spark of, inf uh, of inspiration, right? And so sometimes it can be chords first. And from there, maybe I have to really work at it and, and kind of whittle away, right, um, the, the, the layers to get me a melody that, that, that speaks to me. And sometimes it's the other way. Sometimes I have a really good melody and I'm trying to find a harmonization uh, chord structure that I like behind it. I love really memorable, hooky, melodic phrases and a lot of times those tend to be very inside with harmony a lot of times those tend to be very sparse there's not a lot of notes going on with something really memorable and melodic right most of the time it's not a, it's not a ton of notes so that leaves a lot of room for chord progressions to happen underneath you you know and so when you're looking at what you need to do first you just look at where you're starting what is your spark of inspiration is it, a, is it a melody? Well, from there, use some of the tools that I've talked about in previous episodes to build some harmony around it. Look at your intervals that happen in the melody and look at what chords that they can go to, right? So it's never really, I sit down, and this is a, I want to answer my man Neville. I, I, I never sit down and go, I'm going to write chords first. I'm going to write melody first. It's not really like that. Practicing musicality leads me to like a spark of inspiration that's that's our important thing okay so another thing that happens um when it comes to uh writing like when you get towards the end of your song and you're arranging it um a lot of times you can repurpose things that you had earlier in the song in that aspect it's something as simple as like that kennedy wood riff that riff right there that's just as simple as moving that into another octave right and then the next thing that I can do is I can repurpose riffs. If you guys go back and listen to uh, my tune, Forgotten Secrets, the top of the tune has a riff, this kind of, uh, you know, like this open palm muted thing. And I repurpose that later in the song. And I use it to descend down and move that riff through the chord progression. So the same riff is happening, but now it's happening through different chords, different keys. That's a great trick to uh, readdress a, a motif or, or an idea that you want to be the main anchor point for a song. Like a song like Forgotten Secrets has two big motifs. It's got the intro riff and then it's got the little, um, uh, the, the riff that I wrote on mandolin that kind of moves a lot through, through the uh, slides all over the fretboard, right? 
And if you don't know the song I'm talking about, you can check that out. Go to my other videos and playlists and performances. It's Forgotten Secrets. That way you can hear the song in, in its entirety or whatever. All right, guys. So I'm editing this down and I realize it's got to be in two parts. It's just too much information uh, on writing concepts for one episode. I'm cutting it in half right in the middle. So part one that you have is uh, the initial spark of inspiration. That can come from just practicing musicality like a previous episode, right? And from there, the second thing was deciding uh, if it's light or dark, right? If you want uh, a, a bright sound in your composition or a dark sound. The third thing was, is it fast or slow? You know, the, the basic scoped out decisions. Then we get into the meat and potatoes of whittling away all of the things that it's not. If it's not got bluesy things don't feel obligated to put bluesy things in it right if it's not metal and it doesn't have that vibe don't take it there don't worry about like that don't worry about all the things that it's not it can really help you um and then the one of the last things that i mentioned in the the part one is the movement using a motif in different places like if you play a song like forgotten secrets of the intro right later at the bridge i use that same motif but then i move it through the the chord progression so that's going to be part one Part two is coming at you uh, maybe later in the week, but I just I feel like this is just too much information for one video. Um, much love to you guys. I appreciate you all very much, and uh, I'm going to link Forgotten Secrets.